Okay, here I am. Hi. <laughs> you know, it's really nice to see people that I haven't seen in a while. It's great. Thank you all for coming. So I'm going to talk about medical intuition, and I'm going to talk about spiritualizing the physical body. But before, I guess i got to stay close to the mic here, huh? Okay, so before I do that, I want to tell you a little bit about my journey to doing medical intuition, which I do a fair amount of now. Um, I started off years ago as a um, psychic, professional psychic uh, medium, and in readings, people would often ask me about their health, and I approached it like I did most anything else. I just listened and tried to receive whatever I received. And, you know, often to my surprise, um, I received a lot, and it was, seemed to be helpful. Um, but I didn't really feel comfortable as a medical intuitive. I felt like I was a very spiritual person, and I was comfortable with spirituality and kind of, um, you know, I mean, most people here are spiritual, so you know what I mean, you know, kind of being out there with energy like that. And the thought of reading the physical body and diagnosing illness and helping people in that way seemed a little daunting. Um, I didn't have any medical background, um, didn't do well even in the general kind of school things that would have any kind of connection to health. So um, I kind of pulled away from it. What got me more involved with it was I had a friend who was a nurse and she was very interested in medical intuition, and what was interesting is what she wanted to do, though, was to, and she did this uh, probably about once a week, she'd come to my house, and she would give me the first name of some of her patients, and I would basically see what I would get. And um, it again, it helped me develop. It got me uh, a little bit more confident, but I still was not ready to say I was a medical intuitive. And um, so one day I was swimming in a pool, which I love to do, and as I'm swimming down towards the end of the lane, this is the first time this happened to me with such power and force, was I felt like I had hit like a wall or something, and I stood up, and there was a a spirit there, a guide there, and he announced himself as Dr. Roshi. And he seemed very formal about it, almost like, you are so lucky to have me. I have to <laughs> he really, and he's still like that, like, okay, I will help you. Um, but you're gonna have to listen, and he was clearly in charge. So, um, I mean, I was, no, no guide has ever given me their name and kind of, that kind of, um, you know, strong presence so quickly without my asking for it or even, like I said, that was the furthest thing from my mind. So as things go, um, as he started to work with me, I began to get more people wanting to know about their health. Um, also, I live really close to Duke, probably 10 minute walk from Duke. Um, and I don't think maybe that has something to do with that, I don't know, but I started to see a lot of people who had been going to Duke for one reason or another, um, but had not felt that they were being diagnosed correctly or they continued to have problems. And so I was getting people that had kind of complex and um, interesting kinds of things. And this, of course, was my complete non-confident area because I didn't want, really want to be doing this in the first place. And here I'm getting these intricate peak cases, and then I started getting doctors coming to see me, which was even more, but I can tell you, when I look back at it, I think that um, because I didn't know anything, I had pure reliance on spirit, almost desperate, you know, please help me, I don't know, to, you know, so, um, and I got a lot of help that way. So, but let me tell you a little bit about what I've learned about Dr. Roshi from him, and this is kind of what I want to share today is that he looks at health in a kind of a different way than we tend to look at our health, our physical body. Um, you know, I want to talk about spiritualizing the physical body because through his guidance, what I have learned is that the physical body is a flow of energy. It's a 
um, container in some ways of our spirit that encompasses not only our spirit our, our divine spirit energy, but also all our stuff, you know, and the body doesn't lie. All of our emotions, our beliefs, our past experiences, our unhealed wounds, all of the stuff that we have is contained in this physical presence and in our energy field and in the chakras. And we kind of go about life in this container that we can never fully um, leave. You know, we, we have our container of the physical body here. And um, as spiritual people, you will understand this. And, um, you know, one of the things that spiritual people tend to do really well is receive energy, receive spiritual high vibration energy. We can do this through prayer, through meditation, through um, going to people who do healing. Um, you know, we're able to, and that's one thing that defines, we'll say, a spiritual person is, there's more of a receptivity on a conscious level to spiritual energy. Um, so what I, what I have learned and what I want to talk about is that as we receive divine energy, as we receive spiritual energy, one of the things that we have to be very conscious of is that we let go of and that we become more conscious of our stuff. Because look at this as kind of an alchemy of energy. If we want to receive divine energy, because what happens when we receive energy, high vibration, life force energy, is it comes into the body through the endocrine system, which is a whole other thing I'd like to talk about, about the thyroid and all of that, but it comes in through the endocrine system, through the pituitary pineal glands, and it spiritualizes our physical body. Our this, our cells vibrate to a higher frequency. The more energy we receive, the more we're lifted into a high vibration. Now, Master Teacher Jesus taught us, you know, part of his ministry, probably one of the largest parts of his ministry, was about healing. And it was about spiritualizing the physical body. When he was, um, when he was supposedly you know, in the tomb dead, and he rose and people could see him, what he rose into was his spiritual body. His, he had received so much high vibration divine energy during his incarnation in this life that he had been able to raise the vibration of the physical cells of his body so that spirit and physical were unified. And that's one of the things we are needing to do here in our lives, is we need to unify our spiritual consciousness with the physical body. If we do not do this, look at it again almost scientifically or, or energetically. If we don't do this, two things happen, well, more than two things, but two things I want to talk about happen. One is, is that we can only bring in as much of that energy as we're willing to let go of our stuff. Because there's no room for it. If our energy field is full of anger or full of resentment or full of unhealed wounds or full of whatever it is, our thoughts, our beliefs, our gunk, our head stuff, there, that energy, is, it has no place, it, the cells can't vibrate, they can't lift. We cannot spiritualize ourselves. And so what happens is that creates a dissonance in the body. Um, you know, and that dissonance in the physical body is exhausting. It tires us out. Um, one of the things that always happens in my classes, and I think people here who have taken a class from me probably remember, maybe not, is um, usually after a few hours or a day of working with intuition, people are exhausted. And they're so surprised they're exhausted. Um, I mean, they're, you know, because what's happening is we're bringing in high vibration energy, and if there's not enough space here to contain that vibration, there's this dissonance that happens that robs us of energy. So we become exhausted. We can become chronically exhausted. We can have problems with the endocrine system. So all this to say, I'll keep talking so I need to be mindful of time. All this to say, one of the important things that we really need to do is become more conscious of our stuff. And we need to know it, feel it, and release it, and ask for help in releasing that. 
we don't have to do it alone. That's the big thing. We don't have to do it alone. But we have to initiate the process. We have to be able to know and feel our pain enough so that we can then ask for our angels or for divine spirit or for a healer to help us to lift that energy away. It's when we hold on to it, we stuff it into our unconscious that it creates issues, right? We all know that. So, um, I, I wanted to, re you know, this morning my talk changed, like on the way here. And I got this quote, and I'm like, really? Okay. Um, okay, I'm going to say this quote, and I kind of don't want to say it, but I will because I'll explain it. Um, it's from the Bible, and it's confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Now, that's in James. Um, the reason I don't want to say it is because I don't really believe in sins in the way that this implies. And the other thing is that um, it kind of sets this, this awareness up that, um, you know, when we're good, God's going to make us better, you know? Um, and that's simply, unfortunately, I don't think what's meant in this passage. And that's really why I want to bring it up to interpret this in a different way. Um, I, I, the way I'd like to interpret this to everybody is that kind of what I'm talking about is that when we become conscious of something within ourselves that's an error in thinking or it's an emotional um, negativity that somehow is a low, all this stuff is low vibration, the confession is simply the awareness. And when we pray or we ask for release from that, when we release others from their burden of this, when they, we allow others to heal you know, to release us, that's when healing comes in because we're then able to bring in more divine white light energy, more high vibration, vital force energy, which is what is truly nurturing our bodies. Obviously, it's great to have good diet, exercise, I get all that, but I really want to get that message to everybody that you can only receive and vibrate to the extent that you release the low vibration, okay? All right, so the other thing I want to talk about is, um, that's about ourself. I want to talk about others in the world and how we operate energetically in the world. Um, you know, it's a funny thing, but when people, well, it's not that funny. It's probably a good thing. But when people um, begin working with their own intuition, psychic awareness, a lot of times they are very concerned about what they may pick up in a negative way from the spirit world. Um, you know, that there might be something out there that is going to not be good for them. Um, and I don't think that that's a bad thing to do. I mean, I always ask for white light before I ever work. Um, I always pray for that kind of protection. But one of the things that is actually more detrimental to us is the way we receive negativity and energy in our world every day. Um, it, you know, that comes to us... It, it's all around us, that low vibration. Um, and we, are, we tend not to be as aware of the detrimental effects that low vibration negative energy can have on us in the world. Um, you know, some of this stuff is obvious. Things like, you know, group mind, um, prejudice, um, you know, all that stuff. We all know that. I, I, so I want to talk about some of the more subtle things. And I want to address something specifically for um, spiritual people. Because spiritual people, you all do this, I've done it, we all do it, and that is is that we become a little spiritually codependent. And um, we do this for all the right reasons, we think, and sometimes they are and sometimes, you know, but let me define spiritual codependence. What spiritual codependence is, is um, this exchange of energy that we have with people through divine energy or through what's coming through us in a way that is uh, creating a dependence for us and for the person. On our end, the dependence is this. Boy, do I feel holy now. I feel really good now because I just helped that person. Um, now, that is a good feeling. Don't get me wrong. I, I mean, I think that's a, one of the wonderful things about spirituality is that it lifts you to that energy. It's not that I'm addressing. What I'm addressing is when we don't feel good about who we are and we depend on others to give us that feedback 
to help us to feel like we're worthy or we're holy or we're good enough. And so it creates this dependency and it disallows us from being clear channels. And that is not an easy thing to do. Um, you know, I've been a professional in this work for years and it is so easy to um, feel intuitively someone's needs, to feel um, what they need, what they want to hear on an ego level, to feel their pain and to want to address that in a way that's coming more from the me human part of me than from maybe what spirit's guidance really is. It can be hard to differentiate that sometimes. So it happens in that way and it also happens in the way that we really can believe people need us. They really kind of don't. I mean they do but they don't. I mean we all need each other, I get that. But, the, but we think they need us in the way that they don't have their own light that they don't have their own spirit, that they don't have their own God within them, and that we have to give them that. Amen. Thank you. But it's true, and, and that, that is such a disservice to people. What we need to do as spiritual people is mirror someone's light to them, wake them to their light, acknowledge their light, acknowledge that whatever I do, you can do too. It, you know, probably better than I'm doing. You don't need me to heal. You don't need me. I can be a clear channel and I can facilitate but again we're talking about that subtle difference between being a channel for someone and taking over and, and, and setting up this dependency where they think they need us and we're perfectly fine with that. You know? And, and, and it's because they see the light within us but they don't they're not seeing it within themselves. Um, and so that also robs us of spiritualizing our physical body because that, again, it sets up this dependency that we're not operating from that pure consciousness that God is everywhere, that healing is everywhere. Um, has any, you probably have heard Joel Goldsmith, I take it. Oh, yes. Yeah. Probably a lot of people have. I just love Joel Goldsmith. But that was one of the things he always worked with if you don't know Joe Goldsmith, you might want to read the book um, The Art of Spiritual Healing. I think it was written in 1930. But he talks about all of his healing, and he did a lot of healing with people, was all when he brought that vibration into that higher energy where all that existed was light, all that existed was divine presence. And that was the healing. And that's the healing that we can only do when we're clear as to realizing that, you know, it's not illness that we see, it's not lack that we see, it's not pain that what we see. What we really vibrate to is someone's love, someone's light, someone's God within them, and helping them to vibrate to that um, lifts them to that energy within themselves, and that's where the healing happens. When we vibrate to that energy, how can we not be healed? How can we not know have abundance? Because that's all there is at that high vibration. And, and that's what spiritualizing the body is. It's living in that vibration where there is health, there is abundance, there is all of that because that vibration is nothing but that. So in order to spiritualize your body, you've got to kind of get into these subtleties that, you know, it's, it can sometimes really be slippery to... Um, negotiate us, you know, because you're wanting to help people, you're wanting to get healing from someone, you're wanting to share your light. So always remember to be the catalyst, though, and to acknowledge someone else's light within them, and that, you know, there's, there's, there's God right in front of me, within you, and I feel that and I know that. Um, all right, so I do have, let me see if this quote is worthy. Probably not. Um, okay, so I wanted to do a little exercise with everybody. Um, I think we have time. Yes. Okay. All right, so we're going to do a little exercise, um, and this exercise is going to—you can do it anytime you want, wherever you are. And what it is going to help you to do is going to help you to communicate with your body, because along with. Um, being aware of your own stuff, being aware of spiritual codependency, it's also important to listen to your intuition. And your body is always talking to you. Always, always, always. It's always guiding you. 
and that was one of the things I learned early on when I started with medical intuition was, gosh, the body is quite a chatterer. It will tell you anything. I mean, it just loves. Um, and once I got familiar with how to listen to the body, it, it, medical intuition actually became much easier. Um, so we're going to do a little exercise that's going to help you all to just get a little bit of a feel of how to communicate with your body and then how to shift some of that energy from low vibration to high vibration. Okay? All right. All right. So what we're going to do is just get comfortable, close your eyes. Take a nice long deep breath and just send the energy of the breath through the body. Just loosening, relaxing. Releasing any tension and stress. Another nice long deep breath down through the top of the head. Imagine this light coming down through the head, white light energy. High vibration energy and move this energy through the body. Loosen and relaxing the body, lifting the vibration. Let's do one more long deep breath, high vibration energy down through the higher chakras, through the body, lifting the vibration. And what I want you to do right now is I want you to become aware of any place in your body that's sore, tense, tight, maybe painful, uncomfortable, or it could just be tense or tight. Just If there's more than one area, just go to the one area that feels the strongest or that feels to be calling you more, that feels your attention is drawn to. Just go to this one area in your body that feels sore, tense, or tight, and I want you to imagine that this area is a color. Imagine there's a color to this energy. It can be any color. It might even be more than one color. That's perfectly fine. Okay, now imagine that this color has a texture. It might be like rough. It might be smooth. Be any kind of texture at all. Just imagine a texture, a color. Tuning into this energy and imagine that this energy has a voice. Imagine it can speak to you. Or if it's not wanting to speak in words, maybe it will speak through a symbol or an image. We're going through this a little quicker than we would in normal circumstances, but just as best you can, just get a feel for whatever it may be saying to you, or an image, a symbol, this area of your body that is sore, tense, or tight, or painful. Just tell it you want to listen. Just tell it you need to know more about what it's experiencing. Just take that in. listen and now we're going to shift a little bit what we're going to do is I want you to take another nice long deep breath down through the top of the head white light energy moving this energy through the body you're going to remember the message by the way and the area that we're just working with and I want you to imagine a place within your physical body that's high vibration that it feels like divine presence, divine energy, vital life force energy moves through. Where in your body can you feel the presence of this higher vibration energy? The strongest. It's probably all over, but let's just see where you're drawn to. And then just relax in this energy. If you're not feeling any place in particular, I want you to focus on either your heart or your third eye, penile pituitary gland. Either one, if there's no place that's other, other than this that's calling you. And just imagine the flow of divine life force energy moving through you into this area. And just relax into that energy. Just 
feel the difference in this energy as opposed to the soreness. Just expand this energy, open it up through the breath, breathing in, allowing more energy in. And now what I want you to do is I want you to move this awareness, this energy, to the place in your body that you were just connected to that was sore, tense, or tight. Imagine that this high vibration energy is now flowing into this one area that we had just focused in on. And just feel that place open up. Feel the pain release. Feel it vibrating to a higher frequency. Now, there may be something you need to let go of, maybe a thought, a belief, a feeling, an experience. Just become aware of what that is, breathe into it, and let that go to increase the capacity of high vibration energy in the body. And then just let that one area expand so that your whole body is that source of high vibration energy. There may be some place or more that might feel tense or doesn't want to let this light in. That's perfectly normal. Just continue to breathe, open it up, feel this energy move through you. And then just move this energy out into the energy field so that you're kind of encapsulated in this high vibration energy. And then when you're ready, you can just go ahead and relax and open your eyes. Okay, so like I said, we kind of ran through that pretty quick. Um, but it's just something you can take home that maybe you can work with, communicating with those areas in your body that might um, have tension, tightness, sore. You can gain more information from that. And... Um, that's the way to lift the energy and shift it, is to bring the higher frequency in. Okay, so I guess I'm done, right? Okay.